Hey, I am Mustafa Sharif. Thank you for listening to Urbanistica podcast. I was looking forward. This episode is one of my favorite topics because since I was a kid, I was playing uh, video games and watching all the robotic cities. And I was wondering if this is real or is this going to happen in the future? And I grow up, I become an urban planner. And the question is more serious now. Is this going to be real or not? And are we human ready to do that? And and why should we do that actually? But to answer all these questions and more, I'm honored to have Elena as a guest today in Urbanistica podcast. She will tell us the untold story about the future cities. Well, welcome to Urbanistica podcast, Elena. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for presenting me. And uh, it's interesting to hear about your childhood dreams. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a child dreams, but now it's been, I think it's going to be real or, or I don't know, you're going to tell us. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Elena Shadin and uh, I'm running a startup called Robot Minds. So we are passionate about robots and uh, uh, we want uh, uh, those futuristic scenarios to become real. And uh, I think that uh, we're moving uh, forward with that. So I'm hoping that soon we can see. Uh, that is a reality in Scandinavia as well. Wow. Elena, t- tell me more about you, why, why you decide to work with robots. Tell me your background. The, the stage is yours now. Uh, yeah, I actually, uh, at the start of my professional career, I was working with uh, innovations and product development and then with sales, marketing and uh, strategic business development. Uh, so I'm coming from more business side. Uh, however, I always been fascinated by technology and I think that during my entire professional career, I try to do everything to kind of uh, apply it as much as I can. And uh, I also uh, experienced a lot that people, um, you know, they kind of afraid sometimes, uh, but then as soon as you worries are over and uh, when you see the benefits of it, uh, people saying wow. And I think that wow is something which uh, been a strong driver for me. Uh, I guess I've also been watching a lot uh, movies like cartoons like Jetson and so on. So uh, <laughs> I always hope that it's going to be uh, realistic one day. And um, uh, that's how I decided at some point that um, I decided that I will stop my um, corporate uh, career and uh, try to do something by myself. And that something should be crazy because if I need to spend something time yeah. on it, then uh, it has to be a cool thing. So, so, so mm. yeah, and you know, um, I travel a lot, uh, and when you travel to other places, then you can see uh, robots uh, basically in um, been present quite a few years ago in the US and the Asia and so on. Then I always was thinking that um, why why in Sweden and Scandinavia we do not see it. So uh, yeah, that how idea basically started. Yeah, so you're passionate about robots. Basically, yes, and but you, technology, new technology, and technology, also. yeah. So, but you're you're not scared, you know, the the, the stereotype. We go, okay, robots gonna kill us, you know. Don't 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 be friend with them. Uh, maybe I was watching more positive Hollywood movies <laughs> than the negative negative one. <laughs> Uh, but I think that uh, I think that we uh, kind of when we break down everything, uh, then we understand that uh, actually is here to help us and support us uh, give us a lot of benefits rather than uh, destroy us. Uh, I think that uh, Hollywood unfortunately played uh, a big big and bad role in that, that uh, people have been uh, uh, kind of, uh, even now they're scared of technology. I can see a lot of people that uh, kind of, uh, when they meet uh, some of our robots, they're like, oi. Yeah. Uh, it looks cute, but uh, can it kill me? <laughs> or oh, it looks scary? <laughs> exactly. Yesterday, I made a kind of a quick survey with my friends. I, I called 10 friends and I asked them, so if we're going to have robots in the city, what is your reflection? They'd be Almost all of them, they'd be like, oh, are we going to get killed or not? So, they, uh, yeah, unfortunately. But I think because this is of... Uh, kind of the brainwashing because of the movies and also that we don't really know what is a robot. So what is the definition of robot? Yeah, I think it comes a lot from uh, not knowing actually, you're right. And uh, 
I think it starts from understanding general AI principles because they're the ones uh, which are used in robot. I think that it's important to understand that uh, in general, um, it's a lot about ethics, of course, but at the same time, uh, you know, uh, robots cannot do everything. They they can be really, really, really good at some certain tasks, uh, but they cannot mix tasks. So if you give them tasks which is outside of their uh, main tasks, then they'll fail. And uh, um, I think that um, it's important to understand uh, what actually robot about, uh, where development now, and uh, I think it's quite important to uh, to be educated about. Uh, general AI and how can it harm us, but also how uh, how we can benefit. And uh, I think that it's important to consider robot as like extra help in our daily life uh, mm -hmm. rather than trying to uh, compete with them or be afraid of them and so on. Yeah, and that's why we have you here. Thank you so much for giving your time and inspiration because we need people like you to inspire us about what is a robot so like for me if i imagine a robot it's gonna be like an iron man like you know but from what i understand when we talked before robot could be more than like a, a machine that <laughs> walking around what could be a robot yeah uh, i mean um well at the present moment i would say that the market of robots it's kind of um at quite early stage uh, because all the companies all the producers they're testing what actually robots should be like and how is it going to look and which functionality is going to have and so on. So uh, um, I think uh, you can see um, uh, there are actually robots which uh, deliver robots, which deliver food. Uh, they do not have heads. They're basically like just a box on the wheels. Uh, then you have uh, drones, which you also can consider as a part of the uh, type of a robot. Uh, you can have a humanoid looking robots. Uh, you can uh, have robots which uh, uh, like more than telepresence smart robots, which is rolling around and so on. So you can have robots like pets. Uh, so it's a lot of uh, a lot of different um, kinds of robots we uh, we see in the present world. And I think that uh, it's going to stay. Uh, it's actually going to develop, and um, uh, we are the ones who are going to decide how we want robots to uh, to look. So, and I think that uh, it will take quite some time till we'll see uh, universal robots, which can uh, do multiple tasks and so on. Yeah. So. But, but why, why do we need uh, robots in, in our cities? Can, can, can we human just run the, our business? Do we really need the robots? I think so, because that, uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can work uh, in a smarter ways. Uh, we can uh, do the task quicker, we can deliver things uh, at the moment and so on. So if we, for instance, uh, uh, if you, for instance, take the situation today and uh, if you take uh, the healthcare sector, uh, you know, with the corona pandemic, uh, we have a lot of people who is uh, risking basically their life and going to the patients. And uh, uh, it's not always about treatment, uh, quite a lot it's about checking up and uh, talking to the person and uh, cheering the person up and so on. And uh, um, those things actually can be done uh, by a telepresence robot where a doctor would connect uh, through, uh, through the special machine and uh, talk to the person. So the person will, uh, and it's not only a doctor, all the family members can also connect through that robot and talk to, uh, talk to the patient. So uh, it will help us to save lives uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, and uh, minimize the risk. Uh, plus, uh, robots can uh, deliver food. Also, again, in the healthcare sector, uh, deliver food to the patients, and uh, it's much easier to disinfect robots. And then there are also robots which is disinfecting uh, hospitals uh, and uh, even streets and so on. So we see it a lot. Uh, it's been deployed quite a few robots in China. Uh, I think that we also. Uh, have to think that we're developing as humans and we want uh, more things. Uh, we want things to be uh, better and so on. So, uh, for instance, uh, it was quite fascinating to see uh, like robotic baking machine uh, in US uh, last year. Yeah, I think it was last year I saw it first time. So basically, you could have this machine outside uh, of some shop and people can uh, come and take warm bread whenever wow. they want. 
so I think that it's all about doing our quality of life and also outsourcing things which we do not like to do. So we'll feel ourselves happy and <laughs> yeah. concentrate on things which we really like to do. G- give the boring stuff to the robot. Yeah, I think <laughs> Well, so. uh, if I understand you correctly, so it's enhancing our life quality and give us more time to, to spend on things we love with people we love as well. But you mentioned earlier of this talk that uh, companies are now experimenting what is a robot. It's because we don't have the technology or because we are not really ready and open to to develop a robot? Uh, I think because uh, we definitely have a technology to some certain level to start uh, implementing uh, various types of robots which will help us uh, to solve uh, some tasks. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, before you come up with a ready solution, you need to test and learn a lot. So, uh, and it comes by how we actually, uh, you know, when we talk about robots uh, in the industry, then they're somewhere there and they know that many people see them uh, around them and so on. When uh, when we talk about robots, uh, there is actually a trend called robots in the wild. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, that uh, been posted by Accenture, uh, and uh, I think that it's quite cool definition about that robots are here around us. So we need to think how the, how we want them to be, uh, what type of tasks we want to outsource, how we want them to behave and uh, react on our behaviors and so on. So I think that uh, next few years going to be about testing and learning actually, uh, and then we'll come to the situation where we figure out yeah super what interesting the final. yeah and you're in a robot mind you're also working with uh, creating a robot and programming right uh, no actually we are not working with hardware uh, so we uh, uh, we outsourcing in general the world of robots you have uh, most of the companies producing robots uh, they're focusing on hardware and then some um, some kind of basic software so then when you have to make implementation and adaptation for some certain business needs, uh, yeah. then you build software mm. on top of it. Yeah. So if you like take, uh, because I'm trying to understand how like the process of a robot from the born until the, the function, how does mm. it work? If you explain to us. Uh, yeah, basically it's actually uh, at the present moment, it's more like uh, there are inventors who believe in some certain ideas and who have idea about uh, type of robot they want to make. So then they make that robot and then they go to their potential target group and uh, saying here, here's a robot. Uh, it can do a lot of things. Uh, yeah. How do you think it can help you? And uh, uh, and it's actually uh, how market been developing for last like five years, and we decided to change the concept and uh, say that uh, well that's good that you have some idea about developing robots, but let's look from the business side as well. Let's put those two things together, and instead of uh, you going to the business and saying what do you think our robot can do, how it can help you. That think about business needs um, each company has or processes. How can we make processes smarter? Because robot, it's not about just having a cool gadget uh, which do some things. It's about optimizing processes and make them um, quicker or cheaper or smarter. Yeah. So it's very, very interesting. So this is your model that you, instead of you 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 produce a robot uh, programming it and go to a business and hope for the best that they are gonna like it but in in your in the in the startups you have that it's the other side that you start from the businesses and trying to figure out what is the value by having a robot yeah uh, basically kind of like that and uh, we actually work a little bit in two ways so we we are talking to the businesses and especially now we are getting quite a few requests uh, from all sorts of sorts of companies which i haven't even thought that they'll consider <laughs> some solutions but wow. uh, uh it's uh, everyone under pressure now so they're saying uh, we have that issue uh can we solve it by robot and uh, then we break it down and look at the process and then we uh, saying yeah we have uh, we have some certain suppliers or producers. Uh, let's see what we can do together. Or it can be that way that we're working with producers and um, 
uh, for instance, they used to do things some certain way. Uh, but then we are, since we're always in touch with the market, we are saying to them that, well, guys, maybe we should try it a little bit different way. That would help us to deploy robots quicker and uh, uh, for businesses also to see benefits uh, in much quicker way. Uh, we also believe that um, it's important to make robots user friendly uh, because that will speed development and implementation of robots. Uh, I think we see that even now that like basically some robots quite easy to use and understand, uh, then people still scare like, but what if uh, uh, what some if something happened? How can I how yeah. can I fix it and how can I control it? Mm. Uh, so our goal is actually uh, to develop solutions together with producers, which would be uh, quite simple um, for yeah. basically any user. You don't need to have a knowledge, uh, yeah. knowledge about technique and or programming knowledge to be able to operate the robot. Mm. Elena, can you give us an example of uh, a, a user-friendly robot that you worked with, or like that maybe we have at home but we don't know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if you talk about uh, if you talk about like put it down on a really yeah. really simple scale. Uh, if you take a robotic vacuum cleaner, you know, uh, that's vacuum cleaner, which drives around your home once, and then it's remembering how the location of each room. Uh, and then uh, you get the map on your app and see, you don't need to think about anything, just kind of bring it home, uh, make a quick installation, and then, uh, then uh, the vacuum cleaner does the job. And if you want him to clean uh, two times some certain room, or more fun or skip something, then you can control everything via mobile phone. So wow. that's on quite simple scale. Uh, then if you go to uh, to like real robots, <laughs> uh, then uh, I would actually say uh, we have uh, we have one humanoid robot, uh, which is quite advanced. So basically, um, when you talk to the robot, you have a feeling like you're talking to the person uh, because it's uh, it can answer your questions. Uh, it have a very smart, intelligent um, speech kit, uh, and uh, I think that uh, when you work with that robot, you understand that uh, there are some maneuvers maybe you can you have to make if you want to adjust it to some specific business needs. Uh, but in general, you can uh, basically, if you're a company going on an exhibition, you can use that robot uh, and just to kind of attract uh, people. Uh, to your stand, or you can easily upload information about your company, and the uh, robot answer all the questions and remember all the questions asked. So it's not uh, it's not that much uh, manipulation you have to do with the robot. Uh, but then, if you talk about more complicated solutions, then uh, then you have to spend some time on development of software. Yeah, and what what is uh, the artificial intelligence and the machine machine learning? If you like, simplify it. Yeah, it's basically. Uh, yeah, I know. Maybe it's it's hard <laughs> to simplify it. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, need to find the level of simplifying <laughs> it. Yes. But uh, but basically, it's uh, uh, if if you, for instance, look uh, at the way robot talks and uh, answer our questions, uh, that I think is a simple solution. It's not like it's not like robot understand what we are saying, but it's have a uh, kind of uh, HEMA uh, in English. Um, uh, Is it schedule? Or some table? kind of schedule, yeah, some kind of schedule table that, uh, okay, if uh, if the robot hears that answer, then it has few options to answer. Uh, if uh, it's another answer, then it's another options to answer. Uh, so if a robot do not know how to answer, then it's also some certain behaviors built in. So it's basically um, like a database if you can say in that way, uh, where um, uh, where we make, uh, and then as much data we put, as smart, uh, yeah. a smart machine become. Yeah, because, because they're, yeah, yeah. Now I, I think I, I, I got it. I understood the, the, the how they function, the robots. And but it's really a simple, simple, simple explanation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe people working with robots going to say, oh, what is this? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm thinking. Um, do all the businesses 
need a robot or do they have potential to have a robot? What do you think? You're working a lot with different businesses and businesses and trying to figure out the, the potential of, of having a robot. But what, what do you um, see? Yeah, I actually think that uh, most of the businesses uh, we've been thinking or working or getting in touch with, uh, most of the businesses can benefit definitely from having a robot. And I think what is also important to understand that uh, technology is here to stay and uh, it's going to develop. So uh, we're going to move forward with that. Uh, I think that uh, for business owners, for CEOs and uh, top management, it's quite important to understand um, where technology now, how it can affect their niche. Uh, how companies, uh, how their competitors all over the world uh, using uh, robotic technology and what they can learn from it. Uh, I think that should be uh, important for anyone uh, on top uh, level positions uh, to kind of like have it as a ground. And then uh, we can also think about uh, how, how deep we go with implementing technology. So uh, there are, of course, some companies who, who have ability to test uh, on a big scale. Uh, and then when we talk about testing, then it's, uh, then it's quite important that uh, you test by, uh, by solving actual problems. Uh, maybe you start, if you take, uh, for instance, the hotel chain. Now maybe it's uh, yes. uh, a different story with them. But uh, for instance, if you take a hotel chain where you have receptionists, uh, and what receptionists do. It's uh, checking in people, answering questions, uh, plus it's also need to have some kind of uh, uh, talks, uh, customer relations and so on, and uh, uh, perhaps promote uh, menu in the restaurants uh, or do other things. Uh, so it's quite a, lot of, uh, quite a lot of work. And a lot of this work is uh, like repetitional work. So uh, when we actually been talking, uh, when we had some trial case and we've been talking with the receptionist, they actually said that in the end of the day, sometimes they feel themselves like robots <laughs> because they need to do the same things all yes, the time. And yes, we said, like, yes. we're getting tired. We, after four hours, we're already so tired that we do not have energy to do any mm. uh, custom service. Uh, we, we, we cannot be so nice and kind to the yeah. customers. Uh, so they actually been quite positive about uh, trying to see, uh, because uh, you have robots right now, which, uh, which can check in people, provide uh, answer some questions, provide this information, uh, give information about menu discounts, uh, activities, uh, weather, whatever. Uh, so, and then you can also have robots which uh, deliver food or other things to the room. Uh, and then you can have cleaning robots and so on. So, like, if you just take a hotel, uh, it's quite a lot of uh, places you can implement robots. Uh, however, we would never recommend to implement them all. We would say, like, let's start from one task and then move to the next one and to the next one. Uh, and there I think that uh, for each business, there are some certain level they can start testing at least the technology. Um, and we can take, yeah, we can take a lot of examples there. Yeah. there. Mm. So basically, you, different businesses can build from a, having one robot to build a, an, a big ecosystem of different robots that's running the business, right? Uh, yeah, if not now, then definitely in the future. Yeah. So I'm thinking like there are many small businesses that maybe cannot have the enough budget to, to implement this. So is it only for big companies or how what is your suggestion for small companies that would love to take their first step yeah i think it depends how we look at the situation uh like uh, for instance uh, i had uh, i actually had a talk with uh, one uh, kind of uh, company producer of uh, interesting type of robots uh, the machine making burgers Wow. So, uh, and that, of course, like a, like a quite expensive, uh, quite expensive thing. But uh, they said that if before, like people haven't been understanding why you need to have a robot making burgers and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, now they have uh, so many requests uh, that, uh, that they cannot cope with uh, the amount of requests, basically. And um, then we look at this and the thing that, okay, if your main business purpose to basically deliver food to people, uh, how can you do it in a smartest way? 
should you start a restaurant where you hire a few people, uh, rent the space and so on, or you, uh, or you just put a small, um, a small kind of box uh, with a robot which uh, making burgers and then you don't need to think uh, about issues which can come. Uh, across, or if you want to open a coffee, uh, like a coffee shop, uh, then you can also have a small box where you have a robot in it, and uh, a robot will make various types of coffees, uh, and will be like a barista. Uh, so it's about uh, looking at the problem, or basically looking at what you want to deliver. Uh, and here is also here we can talk about kind of transformational change. Uh, and I think that a lot of business owners have to accept that we have to transform. We cannot do businesses the way we've been doing them before because the world is transforming. So yeah. you have to decide whether you're kind of going to try uh, to handle as long as possible the old way or you take a risk and do it in some mm. different smart way. Yeah, yeah. Talking about the transformation, it's very interesting. So are we having the robots as, a, as something luxury now? or something necessary? I think, um, I would say that if you look, uh, it also depends which type of uh, cases we take. For instance, we can, uh, for instance, we can say that there are a lot of robots which can go to the places uh, which is dangerous. Like for instance, if uh, there are some uh, chemical uh, factories and there was an issue uh, with leakage of some chemical or something like that. So it's dangerous for person. And then you can use robots which would uh, do the job. Uh, or some security uh, robots uh, or rescue robots. So uh, in that case, uh, it's like a necessity to have a robot. Uh, then when we talk about a uh, company who, for instance, would like to have robot as a receptionist, uh, then it's more like a cool and luxury thing. Uh, however, it still will bring a lot of benefits. Uh, so I think that um, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of companies doing it for wow effect. Yeah, yeah. So, so. It, it it depends on the situation and the company. You you just brought uh, a memory for me because I'm from Iraq, from Baghdad, and there we have a lot of terror attacks and bombs. So recently they started to use the robots and the, these robots started to be so lovely and popular in the city and everyone is in love with them and then the the, the policemen started to get a bit jealous because <laughs> more attention went to the robots i can imagine i can yes. imagine they actually uh, they actually also started to implement robots in dubai uh, quite a lot as instead of police guys yeah uh, not uh, just basically uh bring reinforcement to the police Mm. Tell me more now. Now we, we go for the for the large scale for the for the robotic city. How how is it going to be? Uh, yeah, I think um, I think the good example could be uh, the city of the future, which Saudi Arabia uh, planning to build. Uh, they have that project 2030, uh, where they think that uh, everything have to be automated as much as possible, and entire infrastructure have to be built for. Uh, with a consideration of like a new technology, uh, what should we have and so on. So um, I think that it's going to be quite cool to see how they would implement uh, the large scale projects. Uh, when we talk about uh, cities which is already existing, uh, basically, uh, then I think that we'll start with, uh, uh, I'm, quite, uh, I'm quite sure that we'll have a lot of delivery robots, which we'll see on the streets. Uh, and I hope that uh, our governments will um, be a bit open-minded about deploying that technology uh, and uh, would take away uh, all the bureaucratic barriers which stop in the implementation of technology, uh, at least for testing purposes. Uh, then I also see that we'll see a lot of uh, robots in uh, uh, daily life, like uh, maybe now we talk a lot about hygiene. Uh, here again, uh, like if we go somewhere and want to order smoothie, then uh, then perhaps we'll have a robot who will do smoothies mm -hmm. instead of uh, having the humans uh, doing smoothies. Mm -hmm. uh, we will definitely uh, see more drones uh, in uh, cities. Uh, then we'll also see in places uh, like robots giving information uh, to people. Uh, security robots, 
Uh, and if we talk about information, then we also have to remember that, um, uh, you know, uh, if you have robots, you can, uh, right now the technology for bilingual robots is not so developed, but there are still ways to go around it. So basically you can have robot uh, uh, using various languages, so it can answer uh, on questions uh, for tourists, like give information mm. to tourists and so on. Uh, and I think it's uh, will be more efficient. Or if we uh, take uh, any immigration offices uh, or even uh, Swedish skatteverket uh, and so on. So uh, it uh, can be quite beneficial to have robots speaking different uh, languages and helping people to understand information, also fill in, the, uh, fill in some forms and so on. Uh, yeah, security robots, I'm sure, are going to be... Uh, Present in the cities as well, and just like uh, those are just like uh, small examples. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, you, <clears throat> what you're telling now is going as like uh, the video games in in the movies that things are going to fly around and things are going to move around us. Uh, yeah, I think that slowly we will get to the uh, to the phase where it would be normal for us to see rolling robot uh, delivering our food or uh, drone flying uh, with some certain package to areas where we cannot easily send the car or something mm -hmm. uh, so but are we are we ready for this change i mean to be friends with and accepting robots in our society what uh, do you think well, of course, definitely not everyone ready to accept it, and that's what we also see. And uh, actually, one of uh, one of the goals for us is uh, to push robots out there uh, on the streets to make people be kind of more aware of the technology and accept it. Uh, and actually, if we look uh, at younger generation, or especially kids. They do not have any problem with robots. They they would never be afraid of robots. So uh, because we've been uh, we've been making a lot of tests in schools and uh, kindergartens, especially kindergartens uh, or younger classes schools, uh, they accept it like it's normal. So I think that uh, of course there will be some generations for, which will take it more difficult. But it's the same all the way with all the technology which we had. Uh, there will be some generations which will kind of like wouldn't need that much time to accept it. But then also uh, the situation which we experience now, I think that uh, that situation will force us to do something and uh, will force us to bring technology in uh, to be able to solve some issues. Mm -hmm. But is our policy very making it very slow that we implement robots in, in businesses? Uh, we definitely have a lot of restrictions. Uh, We're talking about Sweden now, right? Yeah, I would Specifically. say that in Sweden that we uh, we have a lot of restrictions that we have to uh, kind of follow different regulations and check. And uh, uh, the thing that, uh, you know, when you're working with um, innovative technology, uh, you have to think about ecosystem around it in general. So if you work around with robots, uh, we have to think about insurance. And, uh, you know, it's uh, almost impossible to find companies who will kind of agree to insure robots because it's, uh, yeah, they do not know how to handle yes. it. And uh, when you're talking to them and they're like, uh, we do crazy? not know. <laughs> yeah, like we do not know. And uh, then uh, I'm saying, but you have to start thinking about it because if you wouldn't do it, then someone else would do it. Uh, and uh, it's not for touristic things that uh, they are already here. So uh, then also, again, uh, if in other countries uh, we see that uh, uh, basically some financial institutes, they, uh, they provide leasing solutions uh, for companies to support companies uh, to try this technology. Uh, we here again, it took us really a long time to find a financial partner who can offer us uh, who can offer our customers uh, leasing solutions. So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, general regulations. Uh, you know, we had the talks about uh, uh, if you use robots for some certain uh, purposes, uh, how the union will look at it. Like, you know. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that it's important to be open-minded uh, both on uh, administrative level, uh, but also uh, as a company. So... But it, it, 
is it going slow? I would say in, in uh, I would say in Scandinavia is going much slower uh, than in other countries. And uh, um, yeah, I think that we are more uh, conservative and tradition. Yeah, holding to traditions here than uh, than in uh, U.S., for instance, or uh, or Asia or Arabic com uh, countries. Yeah, is it because of the mindset of the government or because of the businesses that have so much money to invest? What uh, perhaps it's both uh, because um, I think like the feeling which I also get that still a lot of people thinking that it's futuristic, uh, that it's not uh, that it's not real, uh, that uh, uh, it's uh, it will take some time till uh, uh, because we we have a lot of even when we are showing uh, on some events and exhibitions when we are showing robots they're like yeah but uh, they're quite cool. Uh, when we would be able to see them in real life. Mm. Uh, so so I think that um, um, in general, the understanding of the fact that technology already here is missing. So uh, that's why it's not so much attention to it. Mm -hmm. Me as an urban planner, I'm thinking that sooner or later we're going to have this city, the robotic city, which makes our life better and give it more quality, hopefully. But I'm thinking about the, the, the beauty of the city. What do you think? Is it going to be like really dark as how we are seeing it in the movies or no, it's going to be sunny, bright and beautiful? Yeah, as I said that uh, uh, I was watching a lot of uh, nice. You need to give me the list of the movies you watched. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so in my world, no, well, in general, I think that uh, our uh, our whole purpose with robots uh, is to show the technology here to help us and make our lives easier and happier and so on. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, I think that uh, we would, when, when we allow ourselves to test and uh, take a risk and uh, not be afraid, uh, then we see the benefits. And then, of course, we have to do it on scale because uh, we have to start with the small steps. We wouldn't be able to accept, uh, uh, you know, like if somewhere in the middle of Stockholm we'll have uh, uh, some kind of uh, gigantic area filled with all sorts of robots. Uh, so we have to really uh, take it step it by step. Sl yeah, slowly. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I think that uh, in general, I, uh, I see the very, very bright, uh, picture about having robots and I think that uh, uh, you can see how um, uh, when you try to experience it, when you talk to the companies, to the customers and uh, uh, when you see uh, cases which uh, prove uh, uh, that robots is a good thing, then uh, you understand that potential actually the benefits of it is huge. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, so maybe maybe the listeners getting an idea that I'm against robots now, <laughs> but no, for me I'm I'm really like uh, I'm looking forward a smart city. You know, I'm I will be part of making this smart city, of course, together with different actors like you, Elena. So if you imagine a smart city, is it a, a city full of robots or what is? How how do you see a smart city? What is a smart city for you? Uh, yeah, in general, uh, like. Here again, I think that robots is about making processes smarter and uh, our life easier. So uh, I think that uh, we have to look at what we want to achieve and then see whether it's a robot or some other technology we have to apply. Uh, but I for sure say that robots uh, should be a part of the smart city uh, because it's a lot of uh, functionality uh, we can, if we, for instance, look at Singapore, so there they have a lot of technology uh, already in place, uh, but they're still heavily investing into robots and uh, uh, drones, uh, self-driving uh, vehicles, and so on, uh, because they they see it as an extension of uh, of uh, how city can be even smarter. Uh, or if you look at Dubai, uh, they uh, they would like to have the happiest city in the world. Uh, they they also invest in heavily in robots because uh, they want uh, they want uh, kind of make people to take away all the things uh, which we do not like to do uh, and um, yeah yeah so, so 
yeah so basically a smart city that is a, a technology a tech city that making people have more time to spend on things they love to make yeah. to, to become more social maybe because they have more time instead of doing like a really boring job or something yeah yeah wow. yeah i wow. definitely i definitely agree with that and then we also have to think that uh, robots uh uh, they will also help us in a way that uh, right now we humans do a lot of work which can somehow damage our health. Uh, so uh, we can use robots for uh, taking away those uh, those issues and uh, uh, helping us to rearrange our um, kind of speciality. Yeah, because there's yeah. also a lot of talks going about uh, like whether robots is going to take our jobs. And exactly. I think that, yeah, I think that uh, here we have to think about the uh, shift of jobs. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, of course, uh, some jobs, uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like truck, truck drivers, uh, yeah. delivery guys, and so on, uh, they're going to uh, disappear to some sort of extent. Uh, but then there will be a lot of jobs which will be around the technology. Uh, like uh, 20 years ago, we didn't know, like, who is app developer. We haven't yeah. had that, uh, or um, or data scientist, or some some other uh, type of uh, job qualification. Mm -hmm. So, yes, wow, so much inspiration now. Oh. Wondering if being a robotic city is is the next step of our cities, but is what is the next step for you in uh, robot minds and in the, in general? Uh, yeah, for us, uh, actually, uh, one of the most important things which we're working now, it's uh, basically to bring knowledge uh, to people about uh, robots, uh, how can we use them, how we can benefit, and we'll focus a lot on uh, business side. Uh, so we actually decided to use uh, now time is quarantine and so on, uh, and uh, we are planning to launch a channel as well, uh, where we'll talk with uh, companies and producers about the future and uh, how they think their robots can help humanity. Uh, then I think another step which we also started to work on is uh, uh, making like a test platform where we put few robots together for people experience how how it is to be around robots and uh, see the benefits and uh, feel that it's actually a cool thing. Uh, like you were saying uh, that uh, in, um, yeah, in Iraq around uh, the deploying robots and people started to think that it's actually like really, really cool and sweet. So we want that feeling as well. So we want to take away the scariness uh, from yeah. people yeah. Uh, and so on. Uh, that's, uh, I think, uh, one of the main uh, things. Uh, plus, uh, now, as I said, that uh, we have to move quick because we are getting uh, requests from all sorts of uh, businesses uh, with, um, yeah, to help them to solve some some kind of uh, issues with their processes. Uh, so we uh, we need to be searching a lot of connection among robot producers and mm. seeing how can we solve those issues and how can we apply uh, their techniques uh, and yeah. help businesses mm. to survive uh, mm. through that crisis time. Yeah, so maybe, you need, maybe you need a, a robot to help you as well. <laughs> oh, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Well, if you summarize what we talked about and what you have in mind as a reflection and three takeaway messages for the listeners and for the people also who is watching the video on YouTube channel. Yeah, I would say that uh, don't be afraid of robots. They're not <laughs> going to kill us in the uh, near future, uh, like even in the far future. Uh, I would say that uh, we have to welcome technology and uh, see the benefits of it. Uh, plus, uh, another thing that I think we have to dare, especially it's important for businesses, uh, dare to try. And uh, now is the best timing ever. And actually now when it's needed most uh, to try something new. Uh, and then I would say the third thing, um, it's important to understand uh, to understand the basic things like AI and uh, uh, what this robot's about and so on. So uh, educate yourself about the technology. Wow, wow, so fascinating. Well, the co-founder and the CEO 
of uh, Robot Minds. I would love to finish this uh, amazing episode with uh, three hashtags as well from you. You, you you're gonna generate three hashtags for this episode. Um, yeah, robots is a part of the smart city. Uh, I think that it's important uh, to think about. Uh, then uh, also, and actually here we talk about robots as a part of smart city. It's also important to think about how we plan the city uh, with a sort of robots. Uh, then I would say that uh, technology is the future and uh, um, robots are here to help. Wow. Thank you so much, Elena, and hopefully see you in the future and talk more about uh, your projects. Yeah, I hope so too. Thank you so much for inviting. It was uh, really interesting questions. Thank you. And thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. Well, as you listen, robots are our friends and Together, we're going to be in one community in the future. Well, uh, don't forget to follow on Instagram and subscribe the YouTube channel for more interesting episodes about the future cities. I am Mustafa Sharif. Thank you so much for listening.